individual members of each group then break off to work with the experts of our groups. In the part of the material being said, after which they return to their starting in the role of teacher for their subcategory. This strategy is a cooperative learning technique students from 12th grade and later on. Next. is effective for accomplishing multiple tasks at once and for giving students a greater sense of individual responsibility. This emphasizes cooperative learning strategy where each student in a group takes responsibility. It helps to build comprehension and improve listening, communication, and problem solving, problem solving skills. Next. So these are the 10 steps considered important in the implementation and logic subgroup classroom, I mean. So first, students are divided into five or six person jigsaw group. So divide students into five to six person people per group. Jigsaw works best when, um, when you have the same number of students each team. Next, one student should be appointed as the group leader. This person should initially be the most mature student in the group. Next, this, the day's lesson is divided into five to six parts. So divide your content into five to six parts. It's important to divide the content into the same number of parts, parts as the number of students each group. So if you have six members in a group, break your content into six parts. Each student is assigned one part to learn. Each students should only have direct access to their own part. So each group has one responsible for part of the content. So the people will be expected to teach the part of, of the rest of the group. Next is students should be given time to read over the parts at least twice to become familiar with it. Students do not need to memorize it. So at this point, students don't really interact with each members of the group, so they just read and study their own part independently. So temporary expert groups should be formed in which one student from each jigsaw group joins other students assigned the same part. Students in this expert group should be given time to discuss the main points of their parts and rehearse the presentation they are going to make to their jigsaw group. So after each student has studied his or her part independently, they will gather with all the other students who have been assigned to the same parts, which is called the expert groups. The expert group students will compare their ideas and work together. Next slide. So students can, will go to their original jigsaw group. So for the next is students present their part to the group, other members are encouraged to ask questions for clarification. So now that the students have studied their parts in their expert groups, they return to their original jigsaw groups where each student takes a turn presenting their parts of the information. Meanwhile, the other students don't listen carefully, just will be listened carefully, take notes and ask a lot of questions. Once the first expert has done, the others take their turns. So the teacher needs to float from group to group in order to observe the process. Intervene if any group is having trouble, such as a member being disruptive, there will be a point that the group leader should handle this task. Teachers can whisper to the group leader as to how to intervene until the group leader can effectively do it themselves. Lastly, a quiz on the material should be given at the end so students realize that the sessions are not just for fun and games, but that they really count. So the teacher will give a simple quiz to make sure that all students got a basic understanding. So that are the steps of Jigsaw Classroom. So I will give you to Ms. Teyarika Blanca for the sample activity. Thank you. So good evening again, everyone. I am Teya Miguel Acerca Blanca, and I am here to explain about sample activity for Jigsaw Method. So let's start. So I have here an example of World War II. 
So first, we have to divide the class into five equal groups of five. Each member, each member of the group will be responsible for a different task. So student number one will research about the power, the Hitler's power, uh, Hitler's rise to power. That will be number one. Number two will be the uncover the devastation of concentration camps. That will be topic number two. Number three, student number three will cover up Britain's role in the war. That will be number three. Student number four will uncover the contribution of the Soviet Union to World War II. That will be number four. And lastly, number five, student number five, five will research Japan's entry into the war. Collectively, each group will gather and discuss information on their task and form another expert group with the same topic. Next, for phase two of the jigsaw, each group member will be reassigned to a different group with fellow students that collected information on the same assigned topic. So, so that would be for student one will go to a will go to a group with the same topic as Hitler's rise to power. Then so on and so forth with other groups, and they will form another expert group with the same topic they have. And as a new formation, they will share and share and piece together information on different parts of the World War II. So after that, each student will take their time. To, to share their collective data to the new group afterwards as a whole, going back to their previous group, which is the original Jigsaw, Jigsaw group, they will discuss how each event contributed in making the war. So five students will be assigned to different topics and go to another expert group and afterwards go back to their original top or, original group. So that will be that is an example for five members World War II. And we have another example for six members. We have here forms of government. Number one would be democracy. Number two, dictatorship. Number three, monarchy. Fourth will be republic. Fifth, totalitarianism. And lastly, theocracy. So that is a topic for six member students. So that will be all for the shared, that will be all for the sample activity. And now I'm going to pass you to Ms. Francis Keding Lassa. Hello, Ms. Francis. Hello, ma'am, and for everyone as well. Uh, as previously, previously stated by the presenters, um, the Jigsaw method was invented in 1971. This is a revolution, and despite it, its age, this is a revolutionary concept when it comes to a group work. Up until now, the concept of group work is a dancing one. Even at the collegiate level, the idea of having to do groups groups for, for every individual as well when it comes to group work if up until now the concept of the idea of having to do group projects causes a majority of us to break out in a nervous sweat and great rt as though we were on a ship that was preparing for impact which for a lot of us might be a better alternative the jitsu method seems to be a safe alternative to the old methods of group work hypothetically if one were to only have the use of five computers in a classroom of 25, the use of the Jigsaw method could exponentially improve productivity. Instead of having to ration out the use of research technology, one could use the Jigsaw method to distribute it evenly amongst the expert groups. Let's say, for example, lang ha, the class in question is doing a section on the solar system. And as a class, you've already covered Earth and the internal planets. So now, all you have left is Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. To do this using the Jigsaw method, you would break up your class into the most diversified groups of five possible. Once you have five groups of five, you then assign one planet to each person of each group. Then you must break these Jigsaw groups into what is called an expert group. So, Mona Katongi explaining Miss Jewel Kaniha. This is where you must break down your groups even further. In these five expert, expert groups, you must assign one person from each to act as a research liaison to be responsible for doing the research necessarily on the computer. This could be best utilized if the group first brainstorms a series of questions to be answered. This can be even better utilized if the teacher were to provide a set list of questions that must be answered. Once each expert group has sufficiently covered the material concerning their respective planet, the Jigsaw group could reconvene and then share what they have learned. There are some serious advantages as well for the Jigsaw method. First and foremost, the biggest advantages is that this method encourages healthy classroom participation. 
um, teamwork. In general, most classrooms encourage a competitive nature which can be counterproductive to teamwork, as said earlier. The jigsaw method not only encourages teamwork and group participation, it requires it to participate fully as well. And at the end of the every jigsaw learning session, a quiz or exam should be incorporated to emphasize the importance of paying attention to the jigsaw group representations. Another great aspect of the jigsaw method is that it diffuses existing, existing prejudice that might exist in the classroom. So, wala na ay kanang prejudice about sa kanang slow learners and fast learners as well. Um, Students who have been told that they are a subclass or that they aren't considered equal to their, their, to their peers or the smart group of uh, smart students niana, are now put in the positions that the grades of their peers depends on their adequacy. Just like every teaching method, there are some disadvantages of, the, of it as well. First of all, there is the inherent disadvantage of slower students. As I said earlier, having difficulty at first with this method. Some students might be able to hit the ground running in the sense that they can pick up the reins of the teaching and really show capacity for leading in the setting. Others might have difficulties in doing this more often than not just because of the nervousness that this sort of class can bring with it. This can be remedied with a more active involvement in the expert groups. Another possible disadvantage can come from these advan advantage students who really show enthusiasm for the smart group for this teaching method. For these who adapt well, they can show impatience to those who can for the slow learner path. This can cause unrest among the group, but fortunately, this is a habit that can be killed. Because of the dependence on each other, when it comes to the quizzes at the end of the class, the more adaptable students are not required to be encouraged uh, or the aspirants that will help the less capable ones. This method can be highly beneficial, but only if it is administered correctly. That's all, and and let's go back to Miss Thea. So once again, I am Thea Michaela Sirica Blanca. Thank you, Grace Pantorilla. Francis Kading Lasa. Thank you, Thank you for you. listening. So Ms. Kading, love you all. Thank you so much. Thea, Erica, and forgot the other one. Call me Thea, Jewel, and Francis. Jewel, Panturilia, the eye. Yes, thank you so much for your reporting. It was very uh, cohesive at the same time, very comprehensive. So we actually experience the jigsaw puzzle, kumbaga, but teachers don't really tell us that it's a jigsaw puzzle or strategy. Kana bitang mag grupo grupo and then other an expert who will discuss, then we'll transfer to the other group, then come back and report. So usually it is um, being portrayed in the social studies. Do you have any question so far with a jigsaw puzzle? None? Okay. Now, who are the next presenter for the other topics that we have? <laughs>